Hello, thank you. Uh, I thought about and made music since I was a child. Uh, when I moved to New York City in 2008, I started to hear music from India and Afghanistan and Azerbaijan and the downtown experimental scene centered around the stone. Uh, and I began to think about differences in music languages and what I'd consider musical complexity. In 2020, I, I started working on the archives of the composer Widato Leo Smith, and I realized there's no division between music genres and no division between improvised and composed music. Um, energetic impulses channeled into music making are in specific social contexts in degrees of temporal distance. And music composition is less about a quarter note in the pitch of A and then a half note in pitch C and more for navigating multiple time streams in timbre. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, timber or timbre is uh, sometimes called uh, tone color. Uh, pitch or frequency or oscillating rate of vibration decays at a certain rate, resonating in a fixed range. Uh, you can try to produce the vowel sounds, A, E, I, O, and U, and each sound has characteristics specific to the body distinct from any measure of pitch or hertz and the decibel level of that pitch. Um, what you see here is uh, uh, the formants, which is the spectrum of the frequencies coming and going. The resonance of the vowel sounds as uh, partials or overtones occur as peaks in a frequency spectrum. A non-standard musical language like Widato Leo Smith's Encrasmation or Roscoe Mitchell's Cards uh, might symbolize the, the resonance envelope, the length and density of sounds in proportion in a way that is non-quantitative. There is a subtle differentiation in talk about attack and decay of a resonating frequency or the entry and exit of an instrument in an ensemble or orchestra and the interpretation of onset and offset as input and output. Typically, music is a relation between a fundamental pitch or tonic and its partials. Um, music is the, the structural function of a tonal relationship, the intervals between sounds and uh, pitch pitch is a, a dimension of tone color uh, or timbre um, which is the partials of the fundamental partials are are typically divided between harmonic and inharmonic um, harmonic and inharmonic relations. And, and music might be defined as the, the function of the, this change in time. A rate of vibration is followed by a second rate of vibration. The, the second is the partial. And 
that is considered in more or less harmony with the prior. Um, and this is not uh, just the data of varying frequencies, it's a uh, rate of change. And an information theoretic approach concerns the degree of surprise, which is only a, a, a part of of musical order and disorder. There's there's also a biological sense of entropy. Um, the frequency is determined by molecular characteristics, uh, the, the mass and the elasticity of uh, the sound producer and, and receiver with the spectral capacities in a time zone. Uh, there's there's a delta function, the delta F equals uh, two over T that relates a frequency to a time. Uh, partials are rising and falling at, at varying rates. Uh, and and the, the trumpet, for example, has a, a faster uh, so-called attack than a, a violin, which means that the, the partials on the trumpet remain closer to the fundamental, and therefore the trumpet has a greater resonance. Um, in, in the mid to late 1800s, uh, with the study of the sensory perception of sound, scientists discovered that different durations of the same pitch uh, are difficult to perceive. Uh, sensory perception or, or, or sensitivity to difference uh, at the foundation of harmony is uh, not logarithmic. Uh, human beings do, do not notice uh, slight differences in two rates of change, one shorter and one a little longer, because human beings do not perceive the the logarithms, but but are blending formants through the transduction of vibrations across materials. Um, the, the imperceptible differences make a difference to the tonal structure. Uh, a complex of, of spatial diffusion is inferred regardless of uh, perception as a concentration of energy. Uh, the quality of air pressure becomes cognized through many psychophysiological factors. Uh, sound and music cognized electrically are unconstrained by prediction and retrodiction or expectation and memory. Uh, the statistical thermodynamics challenged the whole framework of dividing to integrate um, music as uh, experience of listening. Um, the, the inferring of music has more to do with the formants uh, and humans are insensitive to the to the non formants and and even uh, perceive a pure sine wave as as having a tone color. Uh, the tonal simultaneity means the addition of the the amplitude, the 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 loudness in this graph. Um, the, that curves the, the resonance envelope. And a succession of sounds uh, unites simultaneity by the human factor of apperception. Um, to consider music as information for functional analysis, decouples music from perception, uh, but 
what is the role of the human factor then uh, uh, which is I think to stabilize a vibrational affinity structure in a coalition um, this is a composition by Woodard Leo Smith uh, from 1967 it's called The Bell uh, and you can notice at the end, there's a box of, of notes that were written without knowing how they would be performed. Um, this is the origin of Ankarasmation, uh, Smith's language. Uh, and the ensemble that performed, that first performed the bell of Muhal Richard Abrams, Anthony Braxton, Leroy Jenkins, and, and Woodall Lulu Smith uh, discovered how they might play these units as a proportion of sound to silence. Um, and so this, the uh, roughly standard music notation um, and standard music notation means the degree of a whole note. Uh, the, the length of a sustain is noted in increments from a whole to a 16th note. And, and typically then there's a, a time signature that will determine how many spaces can fit into a bar. Um, uh, this is a... Uh, EP1, which is another uh, Uncrustmation composition um, where the rhythm units and velocity units are first um, codified. Uh, so there are circles. The first unit would be a rhythm unit and uh, rhythm unit notes sustain. Uh, the dark dot with the line through it would mean very short, um, uh, approximately one over 32. Uh, and, and the dark dot um, uh, with uh, a line ab above would mean uh, short, uh, one uh, 16th, and then the dark dot with the line above with a cross uh, would mean a medium short, which is uh, at one eighth. Uh, and so then the, the, the lighter dot with the line above with a cross would mean medium long, uh, a fourth. And the lighter dot with the line above is long, uh, which is one over two. And then the 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 lighter dot with the line above and below is is even longer and then these velocity units are noting uh, movement or uh, density not not tempo uh, more the changes in intervals or degrees the darker flag with the two lines in the circle means uh, extremely fast um, the dark with uh, one line uh, uh, with a circle would be um, very fast. The dark with one line fast. Uh, the, the dark flag is medium fast. The lighter flag, medium slow. Uh, the light lighter flag with uh, one line means uh, slow. The lighter flag with one line and the circle, very slow. And then there's a, there's a pyramid that uh, notes uh, solo. Um, and I'll skip this. Uh, here's uh, uh, one more uh, early Ankrasmation work, uh, Tastaloon, which is uh, for three trumpets. EP1 from 1971 was for a solo trumpet. Um, this Tastaloon from 1974 was recorded on uh, Divine Love, an album from 1978, and um, you, you can see the continued use of the 
velocity units, the, the rhythm units, and then these uh, solo pyramids. Um, rhythm is etymologically linked to the word uh, river. Uh, it, it, if recording a uh, rhythm, like clapping one, two, three, four, um, if that recording is sped up, it is a pitch. Um, and and then if slowed down, any melody is a rhythm. Um, so so a, a rhythm is a weighing of an iteration in a tonal contour. Um, it's a grade of occurring pitches. Um, so I don't think rhythm is necessarily a countable measure uh, or, or a meter or a beat or even an accent pattern. Uh, and also rhythm is not tempo. Uh, the, the interval between um, A and B uh, is, is added to the interval measured uh, between B and A in, in a measurement of tempo. And uh, so if A is a quarter note and B is two eighth notes, then the tempo is 2.5. It's, it's one and one and. Well, the rhythm is the measure of A to B divided by the tempo. And so that's, that, that's, that would be a ratio of two over five. Um, performing a musical piece at, in, in, in terms of imitating it, to, to replicate it, uh, is a matter of imitating the, the rhythm or, or it, uh, it's the sensitivity of to rhythm that allows maintenance of tempo. Um, and the ability to imitate a rhythm is also the ability to add or delete sounds and vary the the melody and and all of that so if if you think of uh like one two and one two and or uh sa 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 um that's that's rhythmically the same as as one two iana one two iana um which varies the uh, the tempo, the, the eighth notes are, are becoming 16th notes, but it's still, um, uh, the, the ratio would still be two, two over five. Um, learning, learning to, to, to repeat when I say sa, 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 is opening a space for the ability to uh, say sa, 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 ni, sa, 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 ni. Um, and 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 then to 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 move from the A B A B to an A A B A uh, form involves uh, learning uh, a different rhythm. Uh, so again, this is this is uh, this is a, a way. Ankara summation is a way of not notating pitches in a staff, not notating uh, what note to play, sa or ni. It's noting it's noting uh, the the more or less density of the sounds, where the where the lighter uh, the lighter circles are are longer sustain or the darker circles are are shorter sustain and the lighter triangles are 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 are, are less movement or slower and the darker triangles are are faster or or more intervallic relations or distances between pitches um, velocity is is interesting to discuss here because there is a technical sense in which uh, tempo is velocity uh, uh, and yet velocity as we know it today is um, as, 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 as uniform acceleration is more than just tempo. Uh, it, it's it's a derivative of uh, space at a time, uh, and so to note the densities of sounds, changing intervals, 
and to work with the densities uh, is is a way of of n n notating timbre, um, and and so this is not just asking if a partial is in a harmonic relation to a tonic or not. Um, it's 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 about more or less uh, density of uh, musical changes in in a in a space. Um, the these elements of rhythm and and velocity can become the variables of music making. Um, uh, some some of the early music theorists uh, like uh, Al Kindi and Al Farabi uh, cataloged rhythms in terms of heavier and lighter. Um, and 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 they uh, inspired the musicology in Europe and the, and the development of the uh, so-called standard music notation uh, and the Catholic Church uh, modes. Uh, um, and I think looking at Al Kindi and Al Farabi's writings, there's a sense in which uh, music. And, and and poetry are are inseparable, um, particularly through the analytic of uh, scansion uh, or or the uh, syllabic structuring. Um, different modal or melodic types are are grouped through their rhythmic patterns, which are these uh, long and short uh, patterns or, or uh, conjunctions and disjunctions of uh, rhythms. Um, the ancient Egyptians had uh, recognized the relation of a tonic and a fifth degree um and the the step right stepwise uh do do re mi fa sol la si do where where do and and sol make a, a fifth uh a, a, or and do to uh fa a fourth um where modal differences um uh, uh, instead of starting with um uh, do you might start with fa fa sol la si do re mi fa um and Modal differences are also noted by um, different notes are are weighted as more or less important in terms of a uh, repetition. Playing within and shifting modes provides a way to turn corners through a musical form, um, and it's. It, Important to note that in in the European music cultures, the dividing of the whole tone uh, can be analyzed in uh, as a division of into cents, where there are um, twenty three cent intervals that are are called equally tempered um, it, as a hundred uh, half steps, and and that divides uh, a scale into to five uh, tones and two half tones um, in uh, Indian music cultures, the uh, sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni, sa divides into three sets of five and two groups of half notes for um, a 17 or uh, 24 pitch scale tone divisions. Um, the melody is typically defined as the horizontal sequence of, of these notes, where the, the harmony is uh, vertical stacking into chords. Uh, harmony is a succession of simultaneity. Uh, and again, the basic foundation in, in European music would be the tonic and the fifth degree partial interpreted as a uh, Resolution or uh, consonants, um, the the I uh, V relation in um, uh, 
uh, arranging chords, uh, uh, where, the, where the chord is uh, fundamentally a, a triad, like a C, an E, and a G. Uh, and uh, to maintain the analogy with, with poetry, the chord is like a, a, a word in prosody, and modulating the key is uh, shifting the voice. Um, so, so a, a minimal interchange of of harmony um, can can go with uh, cent centripetal force of um, like a, a a first, a fourth, and a first, or a more centrifugal force like a, a first and a seventh. Uh, uh, such formulas emerged in Europe in the 1600s um, from conventions of the accent patterns interpreted as stronger or weaker um, from the tradition of heavier or lighter. Um, and this is the basis then of a uh, harmonic theory through chord substitution. It's uh, the foundation is an idea of harmonic resolution. Uh, the, this idea gradually extended uh, where, where notes were more and more played further apart or closer. Uh, so, so rather than just focusing on these fourths and fifths, 20th century European music uh, focused uh, more on the thematic unity or thematic development uh, to uh, demand a, a unity of perception and comprehension. Um, the, the musical moment from 1600 to 1900 is um, uh, co-creative with uh, German idealism. Um, motifs of uh, melodic phrases um, repeat in themes or, or groups and are rearranged in phrasing through uh, changes of the bonds or, or affine relations. And the, the development of 20th century modernist music comes when the tonic partial re relations are considered emancipated. Uh, and there's a unfocusing on the conventions of consonants. Uh, so then the motivic form, uh, which is beyond just a pattern of motifs, it's a, a theme. Um, it's, well, it's, it's common here to get hung up on um, the binary of tonal and atonal grouping. Uh, advances in the tonal structure uh, in early 20th century music created a melodic line that wasn't uh, resolving, uh, but uh, uh, through sustain uh, par paralleled or, or or layered overtones. Um, so there's a state in which it's hard to say what the tonic is. And uh, musicians cultivated a, a practice of uh, spontaneously composing uh, melodies from any given chord by by finding a tonic. And, and then finding or deciding on a related scale to reference. Uh, so uh, this is referred to as a modal, uh, modal sense. It's, it's, it's a modal logic uh, where uh, you, can, you can play a, a melody that is really far out, uh, but it remains tonal if it's held together by uh, relation to um, modes. Um, and so in the mid 20th century, there's a musical moment abandoning um, anything like a uh, key. Uh, uh, George uh, Russell's um, theory of so-called jazz improvisation from 1953 was about getting rid of the rules of harmonic resolution. 
um, saying that thinking about a parent scale can resolve any chord or note, um, the, the related modes and uh, changing chords uh, follow uh, the uh, relations of modes. Uh, so so uh, C uh, has a, a parent mode of uh, Lydian uh, scale uh, in in Russell's theory, uh, which is itself controversial uh, because that's the one that uh, Plato outlawed in 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 the Republic uh, for being too sad, and it became associated with African American blues music. And uh, the, the, there's the the so-called devil's tritone uh, from the F sharp to B. Um, but following Russell, there's uh, more stability in moving from E to F sharp to G than uh, just E to F to G. Um, and Russell's Russell's theory was responding to the music of Miles Davis, uh, harmonizing uh, melodic patterns, and that that Russell called a vertical polymodality. Uh, and this this approach was challenged in 1959 by Ornette Coleman, uh, and and Russell uh, in, interpreted this uh, as a as a supra verticality. Um, uh, but Colin himself called the approach harmonics, uh, uh, where the the harmony and the melody uh, were just one, uh, and and so there's really no explanation for harmonics. Um, I, I think he's. I think what Coleman was doing was really. Um, separating out all of the flats and the sharps and then grouping them. Uh, um, uh, but I I don't really know. I, I He truly believed that all of the notes were equal. And I think that this is an incredible advancement in tw 20th century music and a way of working um, with, mo with beyond uh, modes of limited transposition. Uh, there's no transposition at all um and he he gets the most amazing sound quality because there's no tuning to uh any concert pitch uh and in the uh in the quartet work um you, you there's 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 no uh following of harmonic rules and yet there's still unisons played in q uh there interacting uh or rather they're they're playing in simultaneity and not in not interacting um and so how did they do this uh without any principles or standards of expectation um people say it's uh telepathy because no one knows, uh, uh, but I think this is where Woodard Leo Smith's Ancrasmation can enter the conversation because Ancrasmation um, explains something similar. Um, it's it's it leads to a agreements for playing unisons. Um, and you, you, I think you could talk about this in terms of emergence or murmuring, but what's essential is to emphasize that it's not quantitative and not mechanical. Pythagoreans assumed quantity to be the constant factor for harmony. Uh, and defining the fitting of quantity and, and quality where, where uh, music, musical sound 
is the quality um, uh, without a one-to-one -one, uh, counting or extension uh, or binding to arithmetic limits uh, uh, geometric relations. Uh, it's it's not necessary to, uh, to partition effective measures. Um, I think that treating the music as as information does reduce music to 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 mechanisms and uh also in the end efficient causality is not formal uh, the the pythagorean theorem is uh the site to assess this it's the incommensurability of a diagonal with its side um, d equals uh, a multiplied by the square root of two. So uh, right angle of a square to make the angle is the square root. Um, and so the progression of odd numbers, one, uh, three, five, uh, which um, would have would have been dots for the Pythagoreans, um, they used alphas, not numerals. Um, um, forming a triangle, uh, an uh, isosceles right triangle, uh, um, uh, carrying the sense of elemental uh, formation. Uh, in in Plato's Timaeus, uh, the, the demiurge uh, creates the universe uh, not ex nihilio, uh, but through the existing logos or, or mathematical relations filled with intervals or mediation uh the demiurge works from a perfect model uh, to sow the elements of geometry by mixing the same and different in time so if being place and generation are before the universe as mathematical relate ratios then uh in intelligibility is is called similarity uh the unborn, uh, the eternal order that the universe models as uh, perfect causality. So then what is the uh, dissimilarity or difference? Um, the limiting sameness and, and limiting intelligence through separation and integration uh, underlies uh, the discussion in uh, Plato's uh, Theotetus uh, of uh, geometric mean and the irrational numbers. Um, there's the extended metaphor of uh, rationalization through surds. Um, but this platonic thesis is the commensurability of the incommensurable. Um, and so this quote is uh, from Plato's Republic, uh, the, the vision of the harmony of the spheres where the perception of a tonal range of the eight sirens or, or planets filters through the three fates, which are past, present, and future, um, and cosmic harmonization depends on the unity of apperception or the soul as the necessary arrangement. And this uh, vision is uh, part of the, the myth of Ur, uh, recall uh, that's uh, telling of a near-death experience. Another um, important shift in the mid-20th century is the advance of electronic instruments, um, where it is more apparent that pitch is voltage, electrical signals pass through the resonance envelope uh, and musicians and instruments filter frequency oscillations with the dynamics of amplification. Um, relations of pitch and loudness determine tremolo and vibrato. Um, pressing a valve on a trumpet changes the rate of airflow. Blowing more or less hard changes the loudness and and the temporal pressure of this uh, mixes uh, in the air as timbre. Uh, you might analogically relate a mechanical force to electrical voltage and, and then in music to uh, pitch or hertz. And um, 
and then consider loudness or decibels as an electrical current, uh, and then uh, maybe mechanically consider velocity as amplification. Um, but ease in this kind of analogy is complicated by timbre, which uh, might be called the filtration of voltage and current. Um, but does this mean uh, inductance or resistance or uh, charge or capacity reciprocation? I don't really know. Um, some people define timbre as the degree of tremolo or vibrato, um, where vibrato is more related to pitch and then tremolo uh, more related to loudness and technically frequency is pitch with vibrato and amplitude loudness with tremolo. Um, and one might consider amplitude as rhythm, but these are just words. Uh, and there's no equation between the sounds stimulus and pitch perception. Uh, when, when the musician and the listener are interacting and determining the wave shape, the angular velocity of a location and a direction of a signal in space is transducing across materials and mixing in the air. And the, 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 the perception of the loudness curvature and the, the, the hertz are filtered through uh, audible and inaudible wave bands. Um, I think it's very interesting that after Ornett Coleman's in, innovation, uh, Miles Davis uh, starts to work with electric instrumentation, uh, with, with electric guitars and electric basses, and with the spacing of a four uh, over four beat typical of uh, rock and roll, um, which is based on an, an even subdivision. Uh, the, the, the complexity of a simplified rhythm comes through the transformation of the, the beat or the groove as a means for adding the rhythms of amplifier feedback. Um, here are some panels from Luminous Axis, which is uh, an encrustation work by Wadada Leo Smith in 2001, uh, after he had significantly adapted the language. Um, and this was the first large scale performance entirely written in encrustation. Uh, and, and it was performed by Ikwe Mori and, and John Bischoff and the hub on a uh, Max software. Um, so I, I think the insight that comes from complexity theories that emerged in the 1970s, um, where time is a function of interactions and choices, um, like the metabolism repair systems or autopoiesis or dissipative structures or catastrophes um, are, are helpful to explaining the music since the 70s uh, in the sense that some differentiation can be made between a computational and a non-computational complexity. Um, I don't mean to say that electrification is necessarily complex. Um, and I think the one problem with complexity science theories is that they don't uh, supplant, but go hand in hand with uh, predictive and quantitative modeling. Um, and that predictive modeling has limited value because environments need to have well-defined properties and it would take infinite parameters for accurate predictions in biology, for example. Uh, no one can predict the ordering of variables. People have faith in quantitative models because they're thinking in a problem-solving framework. 
And there's a vast error potential um, in an equation to describe an environment. Uh, there's a difference between a weather forecast and global climate change. Uh, uh, and there's a difference between a prediction and the validity of a prediction. Uh, so when you say that climate is, is unpredictable, uh, it's not even one thing to measure. It's made up of many varying intensities. When thinking about a musical environment, of resonating frequencies, there's a complexity in that there's a high degree of interconnecting variables. And these are exponentially changing, varying intensities changing in various ways, uh, like a cascading waterfall where the downward flow disproportionately changes the transported volume of water. One cannot make music by following quantitative rules. Uh, creative music is more than a matter of compounding assumptions. There's no optimization of music contra some commercialism or uh, reductionistic interpretations in the field of music information retrieval. Um, it's, it's not a matter of the successful reproduction of the past. EP1, one might be able to follow the rhythm units and velocity units. You're not hearing it? No. Okay. I'll move on. But luminous access people were hearing? Yes. But not EP1. Okay. That's okay. This is a what look this looks more like standard notation and than luminous access does, but it's um, still using these the the lighter and darker notes uh, for um, longer and shorter proportions. Um, it also has uh, sets uh, or it uses it uses sets to uh, score repetition structures. Um, so. When I'm saying that um, musical complexity is not information in an efficient causal relation, um, not just information content, um, I think this is a way to invite consideration of uh, the different levels in music writing. Uh, I mean, the higher staffs are typically um, the higher register, which defines a melody, and the lower uh, uh, notes are altering the tonic and dominant or fifth relation or providing a chordal context. And um, in the performance of this relation, the musician is injecting energy into their instrument um, and waves are spreading out and creating uh, entropy in an energetic and material sense. Um, they're transmitting work. Uh, and, and typically this is analyzed in terms of factorization into, into the sine waves. And uh, the musician is, is co-regulating and evolving memory uh, uh of of this um as as a succession of sounds um and an, an ensemble or an orchestra remembers the musician's indexing of the score um how is the memory of a collective stored the there's a relation between the music and the the score, and what is internalized is uh, a record of music in the musician that is 
stability preserved tracking and identity over time uh, to relate uh, stimuli and re response uh, a selection of responses um, uh, and I think a score I, it, it, you know a score is a more realistic image of this than a probability distribution um, especially when you have a score um, like this uh, sequoia uh, which uh, is still using the velocity units this uh, first panel the upper panel is an extremely fast velocity unit it's also green and then it's followed by um the, well there's a chain of of green and uh brown and blue and red and orange and there's an upward movement then um of uh longer shorter longer longer shorter longer shorter shorter um the second panel um is uh a medium long and uh that then another medium long and then there's the create uh solo of uh which is an orange box and a green uh create symbol um and so of a, a very or a fast velocity uh, with with the uh, black and silver rhythm structure um, moves to uh, brown very fast with the uh, green box and uh, the uh, green medium uh, short sustain uh, and then and then blue faster and then uh there's there's this red structure and then silence uh and then this brown very fast uh and then an orange box and uh then three sustains that are um moving into a very fast uh red so i want to see if you can hear this one and follow this a little and if it's not, if you can't hear it. That's okay. It's a very difficult task to attempt to follow this. And if it's not audible, I can just continue talking. Sure. Um, these are two different movements from the 11th string quartet um, also using these sets of um, repetition structures um, and then here's a uh, uh, encrossmation score for another movement to get a sense of how he mixes languages um, and here is a an encrossmation score uh, written by uh, 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 Yunyi Zhang, uh, a younger Korean composer uh, studying with Mr. Smith. Um, and I if you can hear at least you can see this score where or maybe you won't even be able to do that but it mixes manuscript notation and encrustation for a uh, actually a pensori um, work um, so I, i'll go back to considering the mm, idea of a unity of 
apperception relating tonality and temporality and determining the energy um, which rather than a strictly uh, platonic philosophical sense uh, I think it makes sense to look into the Egyptian heritage as it as it passed into the um, Western African civilizations and into African American music. Um, I I feel like I should give also some background to to Woodardo Leo Smith. He's a uh, an African American composer and trumpet player. Um, his his work explores a great variety of uh, timbre uh, with instrumentation ranging from an extensive uh, trumpet solo repertoire to orchestral works. And he established himself in the 1960s with the Association for the Advancement of Creative Musicians in Chicago. Um, his music mixes and syncretizes many idioms and techniques and he really prepared the ground for more diverse and mobile landscapes of 21st century American concert hall music um, opening new avenues for um, performance practice in which every member of the ensemble is a soloist um, and Smith was born in Leyland Mississippi uh, and as a child, his stepfather, Alex Little Bill Wallace, um, hosted all of the um, Mississippi Delta blues musicians at their house. And Smith started to play the trumpet and compose at age 12 um, and studied a lot of music in high school and when of age, joined the military and played in a military band stationed in France and Italy. Um, and when discharged, he moved to, to Chicago and became a member of the AACM, which is a leading force in music and education in Chicago, founded in 1965 uh, and focused on self-determination among its uh, Southside Chicago contingency. Uh, the atmosphere among the AACM inspired and encouraged Smith to explore his approach to music because the AACM encouraged all members to compose. Um, and they also cultivated a shared sense of cosmic morality, organizing education and employment and musical ideas. Um, and so the bell, which was the first score um, I showed, was uh, on three compositions of new jazz, which is uh, recorded by a cooperative ensemble in 1968 um, and released by Delmark Records. Uh, and I think that that, that recording uh, gives a sense of the rhythmic variations and the expansive timbre uh, and the quality of spaciousness that came in the music of the AACM. Um, Smith was also one of the first to theorize this music um, and defined it as neither composition nor improvisation. Um, but having a structural unity of the former and um, some qualities of, of the latter as well. Uh, Smith in 1969 was one of many of the AACM members who relocated to Paris where their music first received wide recognition. Um, he performed regularly at the uh, Lucenaire Theater at the actual and uh, Chateau Vaillant festivals and recorded for BYG actual um, and the uh, AACM was described by the press at the time as the Chicago school, contrasting with the so-called free jazz from more from New York City, which was 
more defined by high energy blowing sessions um, where the Chicago school focused more on space and and a variety of moods and the the um, Braxton Jenkins Smith uh, trio uh, was along with the art ensemble of Chicago one of the primary ensembles um, from Chicago in Paris at the time um, but in in by 1970 uh, um, they they'd left Paris Smith relocated to New Haven Connecticut um, and and worked closely uh, with uh, Marion Brown, the uh, one of the key figures in that so-called uh, New York free jazz um, scene. Uh, Brown uh, also was initially from the South, um, and and Smith performed on Brown's uh, um, some of his recordings and uh, was also working solo uh, and organized an ensemble called uh, New, New Delta Acri, uh, documented on, on his own uh, Cabell label. Uh, the, the compositional voice, Smith's compositional voice was uh, expressive and intense and, and featured an unusual arrangement of instrumentation and covered expansive terrain and, and mixed uh, countless uh, African American vernacular styles, um, and he drew on all of his experience to compose a kind of music that loosened the structure of um, Western European music's focus on harmonic resolution, um, following what uh, the composer Ali Wilson called a heterogeneous sound ideal. With the New Delta Acre Cooperative, Smith began working closely with the composer and pianist Anthony Davis and the drummer Ferona Clough and the saxophonist Oliver Lake and the vibraphonist Bobby Naughton and the saxophonist Dwight Andrews. Um, their studio recording uh, Divine Love is an especially clarity inducing chamber work. Um, New Delta Acre repeats melodies constantly adding material in parallel play um, their attention to texture and dynamics emerges through everyone exploring ideas distinctly with minimal references to harmony or theme. The ensemble finds non-unison sprints of matching energy and rapid fire intensity. Smith was also working with orchestra compositions that um, turned corners through varying uh, and repeating motifs. The compositional style entangled with his performance style. He used um, extended techniques and uh, dissonances within beautiful searching uh, counterpoint and separated uh, in the orchestra compositions, separated ensembles uh, into um, separate units that could be interwoven to produce a, 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 a texture um, uh, for, for, for opening up uh, to soloists. Smith's compositions often used stop start or call and response dynamics to suspend the theme giving the impression of an overall uh, contrapuntal approach, but more often he worked with the um, extended suites and shifting phrases between different instruments, uh, often using uh, pedal tones to modulate, um, which is a, a, a note that continues through a modal or chordal change um, and acts as a more generic gravitational center than um a key uh or even a mode uh by the end of the 70s his distinctive sound was um indispensable to what many were calling the loft scene or downtown music in new york um rather than preserving a tradition or a canon um his approach was very expansive um the 
AACM overall aim to create less of a school or a style of music as was more focused on creating institutions for community building. Um, and the sociologist Herman Gray um, um, talks a lot about the jazz left, uh, which was in contrast to a more conservative wing at the Lincoln Center. Um, and I, I think studying Smith's music, you can you can see his engagement with cultural historical narratives um, that is at the same time suspicious of uh, um, nostalgic temporalities of identification. Um, in, in the 80s, he was teaching music at the um, Creative Music Studio and Bard and composing his first string quartets and, and doing a lot of continued ethnomusicology research, especially in percussion. Um, and then he also was doing a lot of work in four, four over four rhythms that like up-tempo um, funk, um, showcasing vocals often um, and a contrast of a quieter electric guitar and um, with uh, you know complex accent patterns and and then the, the this very high register trumpet um, and the early string quartets are very densely layered um, and and rhythmically complex and and witty um, and um, his music occupied a border audience between jazz and new music circles, uh, but he continuously elided those distinctions um, while um, deeply involved in multiple scenes. Um, he emphasized the advantage of a this uh, the diverse background as as um, allowing him to know what to say to, to create musical structures. Um, his his uh, second um, major uh, solo or leader release on ECM uh, called Culture Jazz is a good document for um, these multiple directions that he was working on through through the eighties. But it's really in the in the nineties that he started to to um, change his his approach uh, significantly. Um, adding adding color to the encrustation method um, and reaching a new level of lyricism and intricacy, um, large scale works like a like a Tao and Jia on on Sadiq uh, had uh, an airiness and intimacy um, and and achieved a. Uh, a great uh, drama, uh, but a drama that was not um, based on thematic unity, because thematic unity is very, very fragile, and it's difficult for um, the individual soloist, um, or there's often the interpretation of uh, of uh, chaos when everyone is a soloist. Um, this idea of simultaneous soloing of everyone in the ensemble has precedence um, uh, going back to so-called early jazz, but Smith's uh, career was always in in opposition to those who um, you know imitated bebop in the 70s. And Smith didn't really play in jazz clubs, and nor was he accepted in the concert halls. But um, I mean, he found his own way of responding to the situation. Um, the images, the encrustation images, uh, I think of as a way to express two streams. Uh, uh, what the performer brings and uh, something more, something else. Uh, the, 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 there's, a, there's a duality. Um, 
I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that. I'll give a little bit of a further of a summary of his, his life work. Um, he was working in CalArts in the 90s. Um, in 2000, he founded the Golden Quartet. Uh, with with Davis on piano and Jack DeJeanette on drums and uh, Malachi Favors on bass. Um, they have a great recording, uh, Year of the Elephant. Um, and this group increasingly showed um, the influence of Miles Davis in all stages and Smith sometimes augmented the group with varying uh, electronics um, and electric instruments. Um, I think with the Golden Quartet, you can see the refining of the performance practice of high density, rapid intensity, and coordinating various techniques to explore modulations in and within a, in a very assured mode of structure. Um, he used bent notes to shift modes and drew them out into long phrases. Um, in the 2000 teens, he left CalArts and returned to New Haven and started releasing music at a really incredible pace, um, primarily with the Finnish Tomb label. Um, the, the Great Lakes Suite and Chicago Symphonies with the Golden Quartet with the saxophonist Henry Threadgill it, taking um, the place of Anthony Davis on piano. Um, and there's a recently released solo recital titled Trumpet that really epitomizes the ideals of musicality and or um, mutuality and um, heterogeneity. Um, and also I would suggest the string quartets that were released recently, uh, as well as probably his most well-known work, The Ten Freedom Summers. He's often now working with this quartet, the Red Choral Quartet, which is made up of uh, Andrew McIntosh on viola, Mona Tim, and Shalani Vijayan on violins, and Ashley Walters on cello. Um, and you can see how his work with multiphonics on the trumpet are um, transformed into, into string music. Um, he works especially well with um, slow music that knits the high and the low registers tightly. Um, and his music's been performed by the Jack Quartet and the Chicago Symphony Orchestra and the LA Philharmonic. And he's reached this level while maintaining his own sound which is blues based, uh, but without the standards of chord changes of uh, the blues and a different social context as well. Um, I'd say in a word, his tone quality is aggressive. Um, and you can listen to the string quartets where there's this very down to earth quality, but um, strange, structures, it, peculiar angularities. Uh, and the cello will hold a tone a um, little sharp and, and you're just listening to that one tone and everything else um, vaporizes. Um, This is a uh, Yuni Zhang's uh, on cross-mation work, work with on cross-mation.
into the second movement now. And I believe that when I made this video, I, I have switched to the art score at around the move into the third movement, but it's not, I don't know if it's in there. But I'd like for you to, to take a look at, at this at this art score and see if you can uh, follow in in some ways.
hard to know when that solo changes to um, back to the first theme with the piano, but I think that's roughly uh, that, that gives you a rough sense. My experience with music description comes more from uh, library work. Uh, this is an example of a Mark cataloging record. Um, I think it, it's probably worth saying a little bit about this. And, and then I'd like to share a composition that I've been working on, and then I'll open it up to uh, questions. But I, I'll say that uh, machine readable cataloging fields um, for, for different categories like uh, medium of performance or genre form are, are more commonly used um, as, a, as a faceted approach to classification than uh, merely providing a subject heading, um, which is impossible for music. Um, the the 650 uh, field, which would be for a uh, subject heading, is what you might see at the front of uh, of some books. Uh, and and the of the two, the 655 field for form genre, and the 382 field for medium of performance. Um, I prefer the 382 field um, for the primary facet uh, grouping by instrumentation. But then I think the idea of the instruments might need to uh, expand more from just a uh, violin or a trumpet. Um, and for clarity, these would come after a first phase of cataloging the title, date, um, and whatever is determined by looking at the item. Um, I think every listener and performer might be considered as an instrument uh, and that denaturalizing what constitutes the instrument um, comes with the externalizing of the conditions of instrumentality, uh, cutting on the bias or carving at the joints of self-experience make explicit explanatory coherence or the explainability of the affective horizons. Uh, this uh, task for, for both uh, modal logic uh, in the sense of philosophy of language and the modal jazz of George Russell or Miles Davis uh, is without recourse to perception or imitation. Uh, it deals with the coherence of groupings. Uh, these projects both render transparent the externalization of reason and sensibility the awareness of sensing something as something. In the case of modal jazz, it's about listening for the elements of self-experience to listen to the hardness of distributing weights in a collective. With the suspension of harmonic conventions in the 20th century music, dissonance, for example, uh, reveals a discrepancy in interpretation and allows a critique of covert biases regarding more or less authenticity. But dissonance and consonance are conventions. Um, the composers that use dissonance, like increasing distance and closeness in inter intervallic relations, or if the overtones are too close or too far away, then it's thought that there is a perception of dissonance. Um, no one ever developed atonal principles of music composition. Um, there's only the uh, arbitrary game of a 12-tone system, um, play each note before repeating. Uh, the idea of an emancipation of dissonance uh, while, while debiasing from the notion of harmonic progression remain bound to another system, which is the thematic unity of the work. Um, while dissonance was meant to overcome the figural representation, it remained bound to the idea of uh, consciousness of the instrumental relation. The 12-tone technique and its general extension in serialism um, follows a 
dialectic of absorbing and negating the listener in a thematic unity of uh, of uh, timbre, timbre change. Um, it, I mean, it's it's a binary of tonal and atonal that um, uh, that doesn't dissolve and maintains a belief in a unity of micro timbral syntax and a macro musical structure. Uh, I mean, this this is the dominant story of of art music that uh, that led from dissonant music to uh conceptual or performance art practices and electroacoustics um the the mid-century works are 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 often held together by a bare minimum of being recognized as works um and and for example serialists separate series of sounds to conceptually integrate them in an indeterminate structure uh, so while denying talk of wholeness they reify it um, naturalizing the unintended as a given and conflating the lived experience of a work and a sonic environment. Um, although there's no longer uh, an assumption of uh, harmonic um, resolution, there's still the assumption of uh, the convergence of an individual listener. Uh, I suggest uh, reading uh, the George Lewis uh, on uh, the indeterminacy and how indeterminacy abstracts uh, the individual from their historical embedding. Um, I mean, why were bebop and modal jazz uh, castigated as improvisation and, and separated from the history of music composition? Uh, the idea is that if uh, sounds heard are interpreted as uh, one tone and then another, the prior tone influencing the latter, there's a field of modifiability, a shared origin of both potential and actual. Um, but there are no examples of artists who can convincingly elide the role of memory. Um, if anything heard can be considered potentially music, any noise, um, how the listener senses something as something heard is listener specific. Uh, and so uh, dissonant and indeterminate music maintains a covert value of unity here. The heard sounds do not necessarily correlate to a generative structure of changes. Um, So-called jazz in the mid 20th century, working with modality and these degrees of possibility in ascending and descending intervallic relations um, challenge, uh, especially the political implications in the anarchistic self-reliance in the avant-garde. Um, there are many con artists in, in uh, mid 20th century art music. Um, I think that there's a presupposition of individual agency determining the surroundings uh, in, in positioning intentionality and unintentional, the unintentional. Um, and thematic coherence uh, reifies freedom and, and necessity uh, with, with uh, like metaphor, biological metaphors of um, growth and development, um, that, that wholeness is made up of uh, mechanisms reflecting an imagined whole. Um, but I think uh, the, in, 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 in contrast, the uh, framing of timbre as a social category, um, positioning or enacting uh, who am I coheres uh, to justification. Um, and, and in music cataloging, I think it's more of a, uh, it's it's opening up a conversation on consent based cataloging as opposed to authoritative description. Uh, hopefully, the cataloging interface that you see here evolves more into literature or virtual reality and to describe um, everything in terms of vibration and everyone uh, is composed of oscillations. Um, I think I'll um, 
try to play this composition that I've been working on. Um, you can tell me if it's um, audible.
Um, this was a really wide ranging and thought provoking presentation. And I really did get a lot out of it, but I have some basic questions. Um, given that the symposium is on complexity and probability in post-human philosophy, um, or maybe I'm mistaken and this is, I, I, I thought this was a part of that yes. series. Um, that's, that's how I understand it as well. Yeah. Um, it seems to me that, that Deleuze's profound confrontation with what he calls the image of thought seems to apply here when trying to put music into these set of questions. And you may or may not know that I'm, I'm really invested in and, and have been for quite some time not only in terms of music notation, but also in the cognitive neuroscience of jazz improvisation. So I'm wondering, uh, just to ask a basic question, um, uh, and uh, let me create a parenthesis here by first saying, I'm not sure what your method and aims are, and that maybe you're not trying to create, um, you know, philosophical discourse, but really aiming for something a, a little bit more stochastic in your approach to these issues. But it seemed to me that um, the readings, which to me were, were really apt, um, the reference to African polyrhythms, West African, percussive rhythms uh, to um, the piece on theater, which is really about uh, the birth of modern music notation, as well as, um, I'm trying to remember what the third piece uh, was on. Resin, resin's text. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, which is a form of complexity theory that could be informed by the person um, uh, that I've drawn on a lot in my own work, which is Ilya Prigogine. And Prigogine predates this guy, and this guy should really know about uh, Prigogine. Um, but uh, the thrust of the reference, I thought, was, was, was really good. So let's come back to the image of thought. Uh, and so we have um, the question of the representation of pitch and rhythm in notation and the range of possible uh, approaches to notation, uh, given that those are necessarily a form of geometry after all, because we are talking about time and space, uh, space with respect to pitch, time with respect to rhythm. Uh, and um, it, it seems to me that I would really like to hear from you, um, given the fact that you can create any kind of geometry, and that's also true for geometry itself, that it's, it's socially constructed, that we create geometry. It's not created like Pythagoras thought by the gods. It's not transcendent. And yet the subject position of the composer is always transcendent to the flow of time represented by the various forms of music notation that you come up with. And to a certain extent, that's very much captures, I think, uh, one thrust of Deleuze's critique of the image of thought. That That, that the map is not the territory, that, that the score is not the performance. And yet you're pointing to a, to, you know, a moment in history 
which I'm very much invested in, which is the shift from bebop to free jazz. Um, where they were trying to create an image of thought that encompassed both the mapping uh, of the musical system from a position outside of time and also to indicate the role of improvisation, which must necessarily take place within the flow of time. So I'm wondering whether I can get you, if I can, if I can, you know, nail you down <laughs> uh, to addressing that. Um, I mean, I, I, you may or may not know that I, I you know, I've been writing about this for uh, for some time. Uh, so I have my own ideas, but I, I'd really like to hear uh, how, uh, how how you respond to this question of the image of thought and its arbitrary social nature and how that connects music to complexity and probability. Yes, and it looks like there's also a question in the chat that's very much related. So maybe that one can also be asked. Um, uh, well, yeah, in other words, I'm just elaborating uh, what, I, what I posted. From um, another person. Oh, from another person, yeah. Uh, that I don't know. I, I that's have, a different question, I think. Yeah. yeah. But it may be related, it may be related. Oh, it just says, I was going to ask the same question. I have a question if I may ask it aloud. If it's the same question, then you can ask it aloud. And if not, then- uh, No, 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 it has nothing to do with what Martin posted. Okay, um, well, well, well um, then you can respond to me or you can go ahead and, and, and respond to John. I can respond to, to your comments. I think um, it's fine to think about Ankarasmation in terms of the image of thought. I think what's important is that it's not considered an alternative notation system and it's not a graphic score. And that performing Ankarasmation is not improvising. Um, Ankarasmation these art scores are ways of working with material to perform music that work with the shaping of associations, um, primarily through the associations that emerge through the differences in the colors um, and shapes. But, they're, they're without recourse to prediction, memory, any quantifiable values. Um, I think that bringing in the text from, from Rosen on uh, non-computational complexity and uh, critique of Pythagoras and then also the text from Warburg on the origin of modern European dramatic music and the text from I mean Southern considering um, the legacy or, or heritage of, of West African harmonic complexity on African-American music are meant uh, as, as, a, as a coalition gesture uh, towards what this non-quantifiable complexity that Ankarasmation is. Uh, I, I really like the use, uh, your use of the word coalition there, and yeah. I'm very sympathetic to that. It's, it's a term actually used by Solomon Maimon to describe his methods to uh, turn uh, Kant upside down, turn Kant's manifold upside down. Uh, I, I really like that very much. Um, I, I would disagree with your characterization of the graphics that you presented as not scores. They may not be the scores of what I call the calculus of music notation, which has dominated Western classical music since you know the 16th century, 
uh, in early part of the 17th century. Uh, uh, and I've written about the, the coincidence of, of the birth of this spatialization of time in music and the birth of calculus. Um, and I would mention that Cage actually wrote scores in deploying phase space diagrams of uh, entropic systems uh, in his scores. And, and uh, that was um, actually a discovery of mine. Um, uh, yeah, but, but I don't. I, I, I see what what, uh, what you've presented in uh, in in the graphics of the presentation as also. I mean, I don't see them as not scores. I, yeah, they I, are scores. I, I was just saying they weren't graphic scores to make the distinction then between, like for example, the cage approach to graphic scores, which I um, Woodado Leo Smith considers it a. a um, the the graphic scores of of cage are are like um being inspired by by a painting to to play something whereas the Ancresmation scores are providing i mean there's a there's a symbolic language where each shape and color has a specific um meaning that is that is performed but the, but there's still what i would call images of thought I agree with that. That's that's the distinction that I'm trying to make. Uh, but I would say that the calculus of music notation, Western standard, um, you know, bars and staves and time signatures, and Cage's score uh, scores utilizing phase-based diagrams rather than calculus. And then what Wadaya uh, Leo Smith is is doing. They're all images of thought, uh, I, I, and so what I'm trying to do is to see, in your mind, what's different about them. What's, mm -hmm. what's different about Smith compared to um, Cage and um, and uh, and and Bach, for example, or what I uh, the point where I see this uh, coming together in in um, Western. Um, um, early modern history is uh, with Palestrina. I see what you're saying there. Yeah, um, manuscript notation scores are images of thought as well. Yeah, uh, I think what Honkhurst Mation does differently is proportioning the long and the, the short um, in, in a way that doesn't uh, require the, the, the calculi that you're talking about. Um, I mean, it's they're they're a asymmetrical and also non-transposing, um, and um, I think focusing on the proportioning of sound and silence as the basis of uh, rhythm, and then this is the basis for more or less uh, uh, velocity is a. Uh, important discovery because it allows for scoring a music performance that doesn't require memory. Um, it, it, you don't need when you're when you're when you're working with the image of thought of the Ancresmation scores, you don't need to to remember 10 seconds before um, there's no there is no metric time. Um, there, uh, I mean, it's it's proportioning in uh, with a with a minimal sense of of memory. That's uh, reminds me of um, like the lag and hysteresis, and and Mr. Smith does talk about the the performance of Ancresmation as a hysteric moment. Um, there's a hysteric flash that um, is symbolized in the nonlinear space of of the Ancresmation. Um, I mean, he's talking about self-emptying or, or forgetting, um, and I think I think it's yeah. It's also important to note that 
when people talk about trance music, there's no rhythm that is going to induce a trance state. It's socialized. And um, that's, I think the, that that's that's what Ankrosmation is dealing with that that social component. Um, but I mean, when I say it's dealing with that through the differences in color, I'm talking about the the color the color wavelength and associating those color wavelength to to sound waves. I mean, you have like a larger uh wave form um that's that's red compared to violet um and so if you're you're playing this red um your every every one in the ensemble is playing red but there's different associations that emerge for what red means to, to for, different for both for both the player and the instrument and the capabilities of the instrument right yeah yeah it, it, yeah the, um i think that is an important distinction to me so um, um, let, let me let me stop there and just leave this question to me there's a big difference phenomenologically between jazz performance and classical performance. And it seems like the conversation that you're presenting is moving back from the art ensemble of Chicago back to more like what Anthony Braxton and Smith are doing, which is really re-envisioning classical composition and, and its performance. Yeah, I'm sure you're also familiar, though, with, um, you know, Roscoe Mitchell from the Art Ensemble and his yes. his work, which is also, um, you know, uh, working in that same time zone. Right. Uh, and, and, which and is, which is uh, which is different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, it's... Or, or the downtown school, for example, um, a, fr a friend of mine named Mark Rebo um, really exemplifies the second strain that you're, you're, you're certainly. Yeah, yeah. But I do think that when when Mitchell's like a, a composition improvisation one two three that that work of, of his is um, you know a concert hall tradition where uh, everyone is soloing without necessarily being influenced by uh, each other. Um, I uh, I, I want to hear this next question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Um, please, uh, John. Oh, Daniel. great. Uh, so thank you very much for your for your talk. I just have a few questions. Um, I had put a, a uh, you had explained it a little bit, but I'm just curious if you could explain a little bit more in practical terms. Um, how the musician is supposed to be taught this music and, and perform it because uh, the theoretics sound very, very interesting. But I, I was just curious of how um, musicians would practically perform this music um, in, in terms of, of readying it for a performance for an audience. Uh, because as an, as an experiment, it, it's really quite wonderful, you know, pushing the boundaries of what, how, what um, notation means. But, like I said, from a practical term, how does the musician perform this and how is it taught? That's one of my first questions. And then my second question is, um, for an audience to gain something from the performance of this music, uh, it seems that an aesthetic experience is just simply not enough. Because if I would, to be perfectly blunt, coming from a classical music background, a, a lot of this music just simply sounds like noise. Uh, and if I don't understand what I'm listening to, it, it simply sounds just like a, a wall of sound. Um, so I'm curious about, what kind of background information a, an audience member would have to know in order to get something from this music rather than just hearing it as some sort of abstract um, experimental work. Uh, so those, those are my two questions. Uh, and I'm just curious how you would, you would answer those.
Okay, I'm going to respond to, to those questions. Uh, on Christmation scores have been um, performed uh, recently by the LA Philharmonic. Um, how they deal with this is by um, learning the language. Uh, as, as I tried to clarify, there are specific symbols that can be read as proportions of shorter and longer sounds and then more or less density of these shorter and longer sounds. Um, so it's just a matter of learning the language as one would learn any language. Um, there is, uh, because it's dealing with individualization in a specific way, each musician is also asked to um, have a journal of associations that emerge over um, you know a few months before uh, and so you know some of those more abstract paintings could be performed by anyone who's played one uh, they would be able to apply uh, their their knowledge to to play any other uh, is that does that answer your question about how yeah, yeah. how to Very play? Much. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, it's not a pure it's not a subjective interpretation. The symbols have have meanings. I think at this point, almost all um, performances are um, guided by Woodrow Leo Smith himself. He's still living. Um, but the reason I, I emphasized you need emphasized you need Zhang's um, Ankrosmation score is to show that it is it is an evolving language and that other musicians are furthering it, working with it, and setting the stage to continue working with it. Mm. As far as the the second question, I don't I don't know. I. I, I can rephrase it. I, I, what I meant was listening to that piece of music. If I was sitting in the audience and hearing the, you know, the LA uh, symphony list playing this music, how much would, how much uh, understanding would I have to have of what's trying to be conveyed in order to understand this? Is this music that's made to be um, thought about after, before? Does it, does a audience member need to understand what the performance is before they go into it? Um, is it enough just to hear it? I, I'm just curious about um, the audience's um, role in, in the composition because so much of classical music um, was written uh, with the audience in mind. Is this music written for the audience in mind? You know, Schoenberg, uh, you know, as, as you probably know, it emancipated the idea of, of music for the audience and really music became for the composer. And so I'm just curious, if the music is for the composer or for the audience. That's an interesting question. I think it's for the audience. Um, I guess uh, one way of responding to that would be to reference one of the reasons why I brought up uh, like Al Kindi earlier uh, was because Al Kindi, the theorist, said that there's a a relation between one of the oud strings and black bile, and what might this mean? It's not an efficient relation it's not there's not an efficient cause and yet there is a sense in which playing a certain tone can make changes in the body and potentially heal this is not an effective mechanism i think that's that's one of the 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 key ideas i think in in dealing with with ankrosmation as well and so I, I would suggest applying uh, uh, applying that line of reasoning to your questions regarding the relation of the the audience to 
the work. Right on. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Uh, Shriya Malhotra, I'm not sure uh, if there are others who have questions, but I see this hand. Um, I really enjoyed your piece of music. Uh, I was wondering how you composed it, whether you, and you may have answered this already, but um, my Wi-Fi keeps cutting out. I don't know if you composed it notationally or whether it was a more spontaneous expression. Um, I was also wanting to comment about how um, it does feel like when there are group musical performances, the music and based on some of the readings, especially the one about music in the African context, it does seem like music becomes a form of expression and language versus where in Western music, it becomes more of a performative repetition versus an improvisation uh, or an expression. And I was wondering if that was something that factored into your piece that you shared with us. Um, and I was also thinking about how this way of comparison of notations versus cultures that have no notation of music and no written or very little written form of understanding music might be something that is an Eastern versus Western construction of philosophy. And for people that are familiar with it, it might be something that you consider as the Tao of maybe music. So you're looking at not just the positive spaces which are written, in this case, perhaps written, but you're looking at the negative spaces of unknown and maybe invisible um, ways of communication and knowledge. And um, I wanted to comment and say that your music reminded me of music I've listened to by Meredith Monk. And I was wondering also if you're familiar with an artist called Pharaoh Sanders. And that's a lot, but that was everything. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, the composition that I shared um, was meant to be fun. Uh, and I did use like manuscript standard notation to write it. I use Sibelius software. And I don't come from a classical music background. I have played uh, drums for a long time and I would recommend that everyone get the free software Sibelius and start to compose music in any way and um, you know without relying on conventions of uh, music theory um, I, I, I think that's um, a way of responding to this to the to the first question um this uh second question is uh i think well i'll say yeah Farrah sanders and meredith monk are great i i i, I highly um recommend both of them um and regarding the Tao, I, I think uh, it's a good point because landscape, Chinese landscape painting um, is a good example of a way of um, interacting with a space that's not a dialogue, um, uh, a dialogue between subject and, and object or uh, self and environment um and i think that's um there's a there's a great 
recording by uh, Lee Jin Hong, um, which has great liner notes that um, describe uh, what he considers a Taoist inflected um, way of thinking about not imitating uh, nature, but resonating or making an agreement with a landscape. Um, so that, I mean, I think that it's a good point that in Taoist philosophies, there's no necessary concept of uh, part and whole or division between organic and inorganic and all of that, that, uh, that uh, way of thinking about oppositional um, continuity um, very much uh, applies to um, Smith's music and the, the, the spiritual aspects of, of Smith's music. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I think I could, I could say more about that actually, because there's another uh, sense in which there's um, in the in the in the um, Taoist tradition that the great image has no form and the great tone has no sound or, or like the loudest sound is inaudible. All of these ideas. Um, or to say that the um, you know the existence of an action isn't a thing or isn't isn't capable of being um, reified, um, and and then as a corollary to that in in Chengzi, there's a great description of uh, a great lute player uh, who um, uh, is named Zhao Wen and. There's an, there's an idea of, of the loot mind that is um, actualized as a, as a perfect form uh, when Zhao Wen does not play the lute. Um, when he does when, 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 he, when he doesn't play the lute, he actualizes uh, perfection that is then uh, nullified. Um, when or rendered defective when there is some performance that is not, uh, you know, that's negating different possibilities. Um, not not playing is then making all variations possible. Um, so I mean, I think that's uh, that's 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 a, that's another uh, level, uh, but then. Also inherent in the, the Taoist approach to uh, philosophy of music is in, in the spring and autumn annals, there's what I think is the only description of a foundation of, or a foundational theory of uh, tuning that isn't based on division. Um, almost every other mm, foundational myth of I've seen of uh, music theory involves uh, string, vibrating string and and uh, dividing that string in, in, in some way. But in the spring and autumn annals, the, there's a story of uh, going out to this bamboo grove and um, uh, creating a, like a, octaves and uh, pentatonic scales through um, arrangements of, of these bamboo pipes um, and blow, blowing into the first pipe you get a tonic and then you cut the next bamboo into two uh, two thirds uh, I think and and then the next one you cut into two thirds and then double and so that's that's a way to get stepwise this cycle of fifths. Um, I mean, I think that I think that that's that's a big di dis distinction because it allows for an additive approach to um, music. Um, and a I, nice I, experimental, I, like it's a way of confirming also 
these ways of music that you hear are then confirmed again by playing them in different ways and inventing instruments that do similar things, but in different ways. Yeah. Um, and then one other thought, just continuing with this topic, because I think it does address um, something in uh, um, John's question, uh, which which is that in in the Taoist tradition of philosophy of music, there's a big distinction between um, noise and and music, and this idea of uh, um, co-creating with the sonic landscape is uh, is 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 not just imitating the sound of insects, uh, but working with music. Uh, I I I'll, I'll stop there. I, I'll take a look also at these comments, which I have not been, or the chat, which I've not been following. And if not, we can, uh, if there's no other uh, questions, we might as well end. I don't have any conclusion. Oh, okay. Uh, do you want to answer some of the questions in the chat? At least like maybe the last, couple of questions. Yes, I can take a look. There's a lot. Understanding a time versus metrically measured time. Could Ben Trippi elaborate on that? Oh, sorry. That was, I was just, I guess I was kind of writing that in the chat during, I think your response to maybe Martin's, but it wasn't meant as a substantive question. I was okay. just seeing if I could track. It looks like, I don't know how to pronounce this person's name. Ayn, Ayn Sweeney might have a question kind of close to the end. So, uh, about Warburg's biology images. Do these graphic images of musical ideas. Okay, I can, I would love for Ayn to, if possible, say a bit more about that. It's hard to for me to interpret just text, but I I can say that the idea of visualizing music might in a sense, play into privileging of visual over auditory, but I don't think that it really does at all. Uh, I think also the ritual component is in every performance of music and is socialized distinctly in um, every externalization of instrumentality. Um, but I do think that there's a sense in which music is not, it's not the religion, it's not uh, political, I mean, they're different dimensions. Um, and music can be an aspect of a political or spiritual um, program. And there's certainly a sense in which the uh, sonic vibrations are, are, are shaping the mind uh, more than most chemicals do. Um, and for, for, for music to play a role in a multi-dimensional spiritual program, working with uh, the emotions would be the, the way of 
using music to direct the will and thereby temper the social world. Um, and it's taking place in the body, in, in bodies. Um, I don't know if I am familiar with the biology images, and so it's difficult for me to respond to this without knowing what that's referring to. If anyone can give some elaboration or remind me what that means. Thank you all, and I will take a look deeper into the chat. And I, I thank you all for all of these great comments and questions.